Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Wake Up Winthrop. Today is Friday, December 4th, and we're following our Day 5 schedule. Winter sports are returning, and I couldn't be more excited. Now, let's send it down to Aaron, who's going to give us some important dates and new rules. The town of Winthrop prepares to go back into a hybrid learning model. Winter sports are being penciled in for December 14th. This includes hockey, basketball, and gymnastics, although winter track is not included in these sports. After the student athletes have been trapped inside of their houses for the past several months, they have had to make personal adjustments to their workouts in order to prepare for the season. This season will definitely be different than past years, but the coaches and players are ready to get back into the swing of things. I caught up with athletic director Serino in addition to the basketball team players and coaches to get a glimpse of what is to be expected this season. So winter sports practices are going to start on December 14th and then the first game will be on Friday, January 8th. Um, I think basketball wise, the preseason is looking a lot different because we haven't been able to get in the gym as early as we thought we would be or anything like that. But a lot of us have been working out on our own outside um, during the summer and up till this point. So I think we're going to be as prepared as we can be for basketball wise, conditioning wise and all that. But I think we should be pretty prepared going into the season. Boys and girls basketball, boys and girls hockey and gymnastics are all approved. They're going to start on the 14th. Um, swimming is allowed. We're just waiting on Lynn English to see if we're going to be able to participate with them because they can't do winter sports at the moment. And then the indoor tracks got moved to the fall two season. I'm really excited to get back to playing basketball this season. Um, I think that if everyone stays safe and follows the procedures for practicing games, we can have a really fun season. It might not be the one that we're expecting. It might be a little different this year, but I think it's still going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to have a really great year of basketball this year. Like the regulations that they're doing, the regulations that they're putting in, I feel like it's going to be much harder to practice because we have to, you have to wear a mask when you're playing and all this. There's just so many, so many different things like that we're not used to as a team. But, I mean, we're going to do what we can and overcome any challenges that uh, are brought to us. So, for the most part, they'll look the same. The only you know major difference is, obviously, everyone will have to wear a mask. Um, basketball has a few different rules with inbounds. Um, but for the most part, it does look pretty similar. Hockey looks pretty similar. It's just more if there's um, scrums in the corner or large you know gatherings, the ref will blow the whistle. The biggest changes are going to be... There's no locker rooms. Um, kids will have to come dressed to, to their venues, including hockey players. Um, and then you'll have to be wearing a mask at all time. And then there'll be designated areas where you can and can't take your mask off. And then the other big change is every time you step foot on a bus or in the building, you'll have to check in with a coach and do a symptom checklist. Um, I think some aspects of practice are definitely going to be harder. It's going to be hard because we're going to have a long stretch of practicing because we don't have as many games. So they're more stretched out throughout the week. So we're going to have a lot of days of practice where you don't have that break, where you get excited for a game. So that's going to be hard. But I don't think it'll be too much harder. It'll definitely be harder with like the new precautions with wearing masks and everything, which makes it harder to breathe and stuff. But as long as we follow it, I think practice will be the same as it usually is. I'm really excited about getting back to playing sports. It's been a really long time without them, and I just hope everyone can stay safe. Um, I feel actually really excited to go back and play sports. Like I know there's a huge pandemic and all, but... I mean, I feel like we've been through so much and we've missed out on so many things being being in the senior class. But I just feel like I feel like we deserve it, and I'm actually really excited to be back. So right now, the the league has a, a mandate out and a rule that um, two spectators per home athlete can attend home events. So for Winthrop, every home event for each athlete participating, you'll get two two spectators that can that can come no more than that and then at away events you won't be allowed to have anyone um, but that's also we haven't um, met with our Department of Public Health yet to see if you know they're also okay with that so there, there's still a few more venues we have to discuss but right now it's two two spectators per home athlete. I think the girls basketball team will be ready to be back um, we've been working hard over the summer we've played in a few tournaments a ton of people have been working out and everyone on the team just works so hard that I think by the time the season starts, we'll all be ready. Um, I honest to God, I do feel like we are prepared. I feel like we've done what we can. Um, so what we've been doing to like stay in shape and such is like we've been having certain um, practices up at like Salesian's gym, and we've kind of been doing what we can to stay in shape as while socially distancing and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I think we're prepared. So as of right now, there's, there's no playoffs. Um, each league can kind of be creative with their schedule, but as of right now, it's just going to be 
anywhere from an 11 to 14 game season and it will end the Sunday before um, or the Sunday of February vacation which I believe is February 21st uh, so really each situation is, is going to be um, kind of dependent upon what actually happened which is why the biggest thing we can stress for everyone is you're supposed to be wearing your mask at all times always wear your mask never take it off your coaches will give you designated water breaks mask breaks so you know if you guys want this season to last and you know I know you're all excited to get back the biggest thing I can ask of you is just making sure you wear your mask and wear it properly at all times I think it might be a little bit harder practicing with all the new rules and having to wear masks while playing but I know myself and all the other girls will do anything it takes because we're dying to get back out there. So we've been, myself, administration, uh, Mrs. Howard, we've been in school committee, we've been working extremely hard to, to get you guys back in the building. Um, we're really excited for sports to, to take place, to get some normalcy back in your, your lives. Um, we have some really good protocols in place. We've been working hard to make sure that when you do come back, you will be in a safe environment. And we're just really looking forward to getting our students back to to their regular routine as, as quickly as possible. We are so glad to hear that the Viking Nation is back and what the season has to offer. With our special regards to the seniors to make the most out of the season. Roll bikes and back to you guys in the studio. Darren, I'm really looking forward to playing some great sports this winter. Me as well, Evan. Now, as I'm sure everybody already knows, it is December, and that means the holiday season is finally here. And I know you're probably familiar with uh, some of the famous holidays, but there's more holidays in December than you might think. Let's send it down to our buddy, Jack Fober, who's going to tell us about some of the lesser known holidays in December. Take it away, Jack. With the beginning of December here, we can see people all around town begin to put up their holiday lights, grab their Christmas trees, and gather with their families to get into the holiday cheer. But here at Wake Up Winthrop, we're going to be taking a look at some of the lesser known, underrated, and under the radar December holidays. Yes, Christmas and Hanukkah are very important holidays to many people around this world, but let's find out about what people are doing on some of the other important December holidays. Like, let's take, for example, December 4th, on which there are two very important holidays, National Cookie Day and Jay-Z's Birthday. <coughs> what about the many people in this world that stick their necks out to celebrate National Llama Day on December 9th? Let's not forget December 13th, when we have National Horse Day alongside Taylor Swift's birthday, which may not be just a coincidence. Let's also not forget that National Emo's Day comes on December 19th, where eyeliner will be in very high demand. And finally, to say goodbye to this beautiful month of amazing holidays, National Bacon Day comes on December 30th. Now that we've been made aware of all these wonderful holidays, we're going to ask our community how they spend all those very important holidays. So I think one of the most underrated national holidays is National Bacon Day. I love it because every single day for dinner on National Bacon Day, my family orders Chinese food. On National Horse Day, I go with my family to a horse ranch and we all take turns riding on horseback. And it's really fun as a family to do that. And also I love listening to Taylor Swift on the Taylor Swift Day, which is the same day because her songs are really good and I like to listen to every song she's created in the new year. So usually on Emo's National Day, I wear black. A lot of black. Now that I think about it, that flag right there, pretty cool, pretty cool flag, but it's just something off, something off about it. That it's just not doing it for me. Voila! Much better. And my most favorite thing that I like to do on Emo's National Day, stand out in the freezing cold. You know, now that I think about it, this is not a good idea. Not for me. I also like to celebrate Emo's National Day, but wearing my favorite jacket, doing it my own face paint. Makeup. Hey, Papa, did you know that December 9th is National Llama Day? Llama, eh? Let me tell you about the llama. I ever tell you about my gap year? So I jump ship in Shanghai, right? And I make my way over to the Himalayas, and I get a job as a looper. Jock, a cat, a pro jock. They tell him I'm a pro jock. And the first customer they give me is the Dalai Lama himself. Twelfth son of the twelfth son, the flowing robes, bald, majestic. So we get up to the first tee. He hits it long, big hit it long. 
and he hauls off and he whacks one into a 10,000 foot crevice down by a glacier. And the llama looks at me and he says, Gunga, Galunga Lunga, Gagunga. So we finished the 12 holes and the llama's going to stiff me. I'm like, hey, llama, how about a little, you know, a little something for the effort? The llama looks me in the eye and he says, oh, there'll be no money. But on your deathbed, you will receive complete consciousness. So I got that going for me, which is nice. On National Cookie Day, um, I stay and eat cookies all day and listen to Jay-Z. So now let's get into the holiday season. Tonight, I'm going to Jay-Z's birthday party to eat some cookies. That's all for me. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, who would have known there's so many great holidays in December? Not me. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have for you guys this week. Remember to always stay socially distant when possible and always wear your mask. But before we sign off, this week's senior spotlight is on Heather Buccini. So let's go put the spotlight on her. Today, Stuco would like to highlight Heather Buccini on today's Senior Friday. When Heather Buccini was asked about her favorite WHS memory, she said that my favorite WH memory was reporting in all of the High School Drama Society productions. And when asked what was her favorite class and why, she said, My favorite class that I have taken at WHS is Advanced Drama. There was never a day this class wasn't fun. I always had something to look forward to in my day and I was enjoyed expressing myself in many different ways with many of my peers. When Heather was asked about what she missed most about Winter High School, she said that she definitely missed seeing her lifelong friends every day and laughing with them at lunch and in classes. When Heather was asked about her plans for next year, she said that her plans are to hopefully go far for college and begin nursing school. And when she was asked where does she see herself in 20 years, she said, In 20 years, I see myself working at MGH as a nurse, happily married with a family with no more COVID-19. When Miss Kalenda was asked to comment on Heather Buccini, she said that, it was a joy to work with Heather since she started in the WHS Drama Society as a freshman. She's a true triple threat, a talented actor, singer, and dancer. Heather played a variety of roles and has excelled in each and every one. She absolutely shines on the stage. Behind the scenes, she's enthusiastic and dedicated. Her positive attitude and work ethic have made her a role model for others. Heather has been a consistent bright light in the WHS Drama Society. I am incredibly proud of all that she has accomplished. Thanks, Heather, and good luck in the years to come.